I built this solar station 8 years ago and it cost me about $1000. This mirrors focus solar radiation and convert it into heating water for space heating this house in winter and heating water of this pool in summer in the climate of central Ukraine. Many of us might think that this steam could be used to generate electricity, however, in fact, it is not, and the main problem will be described in the middle of this video. But that problem is solved by this my new solar heater, and I will show how it can create thermal energy with temperatures up to 400 degrees Celsius. I will describe it in the last minutes of this video, and therefore millions of these cheap solar heaters can form similar solar stations to generate cheap solar electricity. So, I repeat that in 3 minutes I will start describing this new solar heater that solves the main problem of these old devices. But for now, let's analyze how this old solar station could generate electricity. Many of us may think that here we should install a turbine which will rotate an electric generator, but this is a bad idea, and we have to use another method which is used by solar power plants of this type. Investors have already built more than a hundred similar power plants in various countries, and let's look at how solar electricity is generated by this American station with a cost of 2 billion dollars. When the sun appears, its radiation is focused by these mirrors and heats thermal oil inside these tubes to temperatures of almost 400 degrees. This hot oil moves to the center of the solar plant, where a fraction of its thermal energy produces steam for a turbine that generates electricity. The rest of the thermal energy of the oil comes to these heat storages, where the energy heats more than 100,000 tons of molten salt. A few hours later, in the evening or at night, this hot molten salt will produce steam for the same turbine. Unfortunately, these solar heaters are very expensive, and therefore they give us expensive electricity, but these my devices are about 10 times cheaper. So, here pumps must guarantee circulation of thermal oil with a temperature of about 300 degrees Celsius, and this solar radiation must heat the hot oil to even higher temperatures. In addition, our cheap solar heaters must form similar long rows, covering an area of many square kilometers. When the sun is shining, that hot oil must transfer the thermal energy to a turbine and heat storages, which were described in this my previous video. Those heat storages can provide the thermal energy to operate the turbine in the coming night, or for several non-solar days in a row, or maybe they can transfer a lot of thermal energy from summer to winter. That is why our solar power plants are becoming independent of the weather and the season, and that previous video describes these formulas with such a cost of our solar electricity, which is cheaper than electricity from thermal and nuclear power plants. But unfortunately, these old solar heaters have the following big problem, which will be solved by this new heater. Unfortunately, these old solar heaters are not able to heat the oil with a temperature of 300 degrees, and now we can notice the cause why this is so. We can notice that here the solar radiation from my mirrors is 5 or 8 times the normal radiation flux from the sun. The compression of 5 or 8 times is sufficient for a good heating power of a heat transfer fluid with a temperature of 100 degrees Celsius or perhaps 200 degrees. But unfortunately, the good heating power at 300 degrees is not achievable. For example, these expensive solar heaters can compress solar radiation by about 50 times. But this new device compresses solar radiation by a factor of about 20 or 30, which should be enough to heat thermal oil at around 300 degrees Celsius. And let's look at how this new device achieves such compression of solar radiation. My old device uses these mirrors, which are a sheet of expanded polystyrene with a cheap reflective film. This is a very cheap type of mirrors, and it uses these materials with a total cost of less than one dollar per square meter of mirrors, and it is approximately 300 times cheaper than the total construction cost of these solar heaters. I use the simplest methods to replace my cheap mirrors, because their lifespan is one and a half years. 
Now I am showing how those mirrors cover a long row of my old solar heaters. Let's look at the mirrors of my new device and they are the same but narrower with a width of 25 cm. These mirrors form such mirror stripes. We see that two narrow mirrors are mounted on these wooden slats which form the desired shape of our mirrors. Now we can see that my new solar heater has these seven mirror stripes. Pay your attention to these slats and their concave shape leads to the fact that the seven mirror stripes focus the solar radiation at this point. Now I will show you the focused solar radiation and therefore here I will set a white screen that we see here. This is as part of the solar radiation from my mirrors and this is its dimensions. The area of this spot is about 35 times less than the total area of my mirrors, which has these dimensions. So, the flux of solar radiation inside this spot is approximately 25 times greater than the flux of radiation from the sun. Let's look at how this spot will light a piece of newspaper. 10 seconds later, the newspaper burst into flames. It is obvious that the point of location of this newspaper must be the point of location of a similar receiver which converts the solar energy of that spot into heating the hot thermal oil. This is just one example of the receiver design with such a black container through which that oil must circulate. It is obvious that the solar radiation heats up this black surface and its thermal energy will have to be transferred to the oil. Here we see that now the sun has heated this black surface to a temperature higher than 300 degrees Celsius and some of its points have more than 400 degrees, while the ambient temperature is 5 degrees below zero. But this black surface is only black paint and this temperature would be noticeably higher if this black paint was replaced with a selective coating, which is similar to the coating of such well-known solar collectors. In addition, we must use a similar transparent covering, which will also drastically increase the heating temperature. Experts are well aware that the heating temperature inside the solar collectors is about four times higher than the heating temperature of these simple solar heaters without selective coating and without the transparent covering. But on the other hand, the operating temperature will be several times lower than the maximum heating temperature. Now I show that our receiver should move during the day according to the movement of the sun across the sky. This maximum western position of the receiver should be in the morning and then the receiver gradually moves during the day to this maximum eastern position in the evening. The basic principles of these movements were shown in this old video, where I described a large new class of solar heaters, which contains not only this new device, but also this type of solar heaters and other types. For example, that old video showed how this part of solar radiation from the concave mirror moves during the day. Now I will show you similar experiment with my new device, so that we can see one of its important drawbacks, which will noticeably reduce our thermal energy generation and the heating temperature. It is noon and this part of solar radiation is here. Now the area of the spot is minimal, but the closer to the evening, the larger its area. It is one and a half hours later, and we can notice that the spot area has become slightly larger. Another hour later, we see that already a significant part of the solar radiation will pass by our receiver, which should be here. It is now three and a half hours after the noon, and this place covers less than half of the solar energy that comes from my mirrors. This situation will allow our receiver to generate thermal energy with a small power and only a small heating temperature, for example 100 or 200 degrees Celsius, but not 300 degrees. It is obvious that we will see similar phenomena not only in the evening, but also in the morning, and now it is one and a half hours before the noon. We see that the focus is still good, but this is the situation one more hour early, two and a half hours before the noon, and we understand that up to this point our receiver would not work well. 
Of course, this is just the beginning of my testing of this type of solar heater and I will describe the continuation of its research in my future videos. For example, we understand that I have to make another receiver with an area several times larger and possibly of a different type, for example similar to these well-known solar collectors, which consist of such pipes with metal ribs. In addition, I have to remake this mirror to match this formula, which requires our solar heater to produce this cheap solar heat, have a cent per kilowatt hour, and it is about 10 times cheaper than the cost of heat from natural gas.